Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lasso Tool Concept, and today is March 22nd, 2018, and this is the Cancale Show, episode 366, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be learning, yes, that is, of course, we're going to be learning how to create concepts with the Lasso Tool. So come on over to the ranch, and let's go ahead and lasso, let's go ahead and wrangle some concepts here. Today, we're going to be working with Made of Metal, and of course, the Lasso Tool is the third tool down on your bar over there. And let's go ahead and just give ourselves a quick introductory course to the lasso tool. Last week we talked about building backgrounds with the lasso tool and upon like in hindsight I realized that I probably could have gone a little bit more in depth with it. Um, so today I'm going to make sure that I run you through my exact setup and most importantly how to set up your lasso tool so that way you can create a shape such as this and then create you know other shapes and then fill that shape with one button okay and that is the fill button of course. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So the first thing that you want to do is you'll notice that creating a shape with your lasso tool, well, right, that's that's all well and good, but let's say that we want to add something to it. See how it gets rid of it? Well, if you hold shift, now you can add as many shapes as you want. And hey, really cool thing, if you hold alt, you can subtract shapes from within there. Okay, so you can have something like that. Then normally to fill, you would have to hold shift and F5. But see how it brings up that dialog panel of choose foreground color. In this case, you can see it's our green. Then you have to, have to hit OK. We want to set that up so that way it's just one button because we're going to be doing a lot of filling, a lot of grabbing with the lasso. And uh, one button solutions are going to help us a lot. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first thing I'm going to direct you to is head on up to window and hit actions. What are actions, you may ask? Well, actions are very simple ways to set up one key hotkeys. You can see right here, I've got one named fill. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. You can see it's set to F4, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete it because we're going to make it over again. So the way that you create a new action, very similar to this new layer button down here, we can also do new action. So go ahead and click this button right here. Then name this action fill. Very important that you do that. Actually, no, it's not. But this part is. Choosing the proper hotkey. I like to, to use F4 because it just feels right. I, I don't know. I just used it that way for many years. So we're good on that. So pick F4 if it's available. If not, pick another key. Then hit record. Then all you have to do is go to edit and then choose fill and then choose foreground color. And once you've done this, see how it will fill with whatever color you have here. In this case, we have green. Go ahead and hit stop. Hit stop. And then I would ask that you go ahead and just uh, get rid of, just delete that, clear that scene out, or clear that layer out. And then what you'll notice, let's go ahead and pick a different color. Let's go ahead and pick like pink or something. Now let's make a new layer and watch as you have done this. If you've done this correctly, you'll be able to create new shapes and then one key, F4, immediately fills it. No more dialog box. And that is going to be the main thing for today. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the next thing that I want to talk about. And that is three color concepts, because you saw in the beginning, uh, there should have been something that said three color concepts. Now, what could that possibly mean? Well, that means that we're going to be concepting today with as little as three colors. So let's go ahead and start by taking our white canvas and let's drop it down a little bit so that way it's a little easier on the eyes. I try to stay away from bright white because eventually we'll want to have bright areas or bright uh, things on the character, say glows and stuff, and it's going to look a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier to pull those things out if we have a darker background. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, another thing that I found that's really fun to do is pick like a mid-tone, maybe slightly darker color like this, and then go ahead and just create a few boxes for me, if you would. So go ahead and create a box like that, hit F4, or your key of choice. Another box like that, key of choice. Another box like that, key of choice. Okay, so now we have a few things that are automatically going to give our piece depth. Now, the next step, next step is, uh, oh wait, uh, oh, those should have technically been on another layer, but uh, eh, whatever, it's all good. I'm sure I can I'm sure I can make this work. Yeah, let's go ahead and brighten those up just a tad bit. Cool. Make sure that you're working on a separate layer here, at least for this part. Okay, what I'm going to ask that you do for this next part with the lasso tool is go ahead and eye drop this box that you just made of the slightly darker, darker color. They say <laughs> You didn't hear that. <laughs> I'm so naughty. Uh, go ahead and drop it down just a tad bit and then go ahead and hit okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and start laying in our 
shapes. Now, what I'm gonna ask that you do here is we're creating a character, right? So go ahead and just create like a shape that represents the head. But then off of that, create another shape and start kind of like building things off of this that uh, may represent your body. Let's say that we wanted like a shoulder pad here. Go ahead and draw, you could draw in the shape of the shoulder pad like that. But here's another thing that I would ask that you do. Draw in the shape of the shoulder guard, but then try cutting out a piece from it to maybe simulate, see how this is simulating a shape, maybe a light source? Because what we're trying to do here is we are beginning to jog our creativity. We're beginning to jog our creativity. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of build this down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and build some things in here. And what we're doing is we're going for speed here. Speed is absolutely paramount in this type of design, okay? Because what's really nice about this type of style of concepting is that it allows you, see how I'm just kind of like lassoing little shapes, uh, then hitting F4? And then I might lasso a large shape and, and hit F4. And this is a great example or a great practice in um, exercising small, medium, large which is, of course, the golden rule of design. You wanna make sure, like, just look at this piece here. We have a lot of really nice large pieces, but then we have like smaller little details that are getting added in. And I wanna invite you to just kinda of have fun with this. Just kinda of throw those in, in areas that you think they might look good. And before you know it, you might be able to start seeing a body appear. You might be able to start seeing something appear. But the next thing that I want to bring your attention to is that's all well and good, but we wanna make sure that we come up with a couple ideas. So go ahead and make a new layer, and I wanna challenge you, I'm gonna do two just for the, the case of this exercise, and I wanna challenge you to create a couple different ones. Create a couple different ones. Don't just get stuck on one. No, don't do that, that's for amateur artists. You're not an amateur, are you? Of course not, you're watching this show, that means you're a pro, or at least very quickly on your way to being pro, I should hope. <laughs> so go ahead and continue with this. I'm already liking this one. A little bit more so I'm just kind of like drawing in shapes that may represent my character's head and uh, actually I didn't like that one and try your best to not use the history to go back but let's say that we want like a chest piece here see you can even hold a shift to continue adding you can even do things like this like create a big shape by adding uh, holding down shift like this and fill that boom Okay, that's another possible thing that you can do. I want some bigger shapes over here in this area. Let's have some small shapes in here. And you might ask, Kenan, how do you know what types of shapes to put in? I'm just kind of going with the flow on this. I'm just almost thinking about it in terms of light and shadow, if you want to think about it that way. But uh, oftentimes you can pull ideas out from uh, just the simplest types of shapes, just the simplest types of uh, ideas and little kind of, have you ever like tried to look at the wall, like if you have texture on the wall and the way that the shadows will go across that wall or wood grain, oftentimes you can see things in that, you can see figures. And that's all done by just the random placements of the wood grain or of the speckles on the wall. And so the same thing is happening here. You're almost, you have a general idea of what you wanna make, but you're more than, uh, more likely than anything, you wanna make sure that you are just kind of having fun with this and just throwing in shapes, throwing in shapes and seeing what you can, can come up with, okay? So we've got these two things here, these two possibilities. I actually wanna do a third. I wanna do a third, because these two look very similar. You can tell that I have, I have like a composition in my mind that I'm trying to get to, and I even wanna to try to break out of that. So for this last one, I'm gonna try something even crazier. I'm gonna try something like this, and you can see, even with large shapes like this, there's still like a hierarchy to it. See how there's like this large shape and then the small shape. You know, there's like weird things like this that are happening. Um, and I wanna invite you to get out of your comfort zone and don't try to necessarily draw exactly what you're seeing, but allow your, <laughs> and it sounds like, uh, this is so like spiritual, or it sounds like what I'm saying is like so esoteric. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of what it is. I, I really want to invite you to create interesting designs. Oh man, this is already looking way cooler. And see how much more interesting that feels? There's something inside of that that feels more interesting. So immediately, I'm gonna go for that third one. I'm gonna go for this third one because I really like this giant shape that's kind of arching through it. Okay, so next, well, I talked about three color concepts, right? Well, where's the third color? 
let's go ahead and start adding in a slightly lighter color. And the color that I want you to use is not straight white. Rather, what I'd like you to do is I drop this background color and then kind of bring it up just a notch, just a tiny notch, because what you want is you, you're looking for low contrast here. You're looking for low contrast. Actually, that might be too low contrast. And the reason why it's low contrast is it will allow your mind to, again, begin connecting the dots in a way that's a lot more, it allows your mind to see more things. You can see more things within this. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Digging that. Yeah, yeah, that looks really cool. I dig that. And now, okay, so now we have something that I would say is looking quite good. There's something within this that feels really fun that we can build off of. So let's go ahead and jump into there. And now what I'm going to ask that you do is get out something that's similar to your ink brush because we want to continue concepting on top of this, but we don't want something that is like, uh, for instance, the regular hard brush. See how the lighter I press, the less opacity it has. We want something that's full opacity all the time because we want to continue elaborating off of these, these uh, shapes. Okay, so in this case, I choose the ink brush. See how it's always constantly the same uh, opacity. It's always nice and dark. And, and in which case it looks like you're always pressing with the full amount of force. So let's go ahead and get into that, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna begin um, laying in some additional colors. And I'm gonna begin uh, trying to pull out what I see here, pull out the face that I see in here. Now here's a really cool way to draw a face. In this case, if it's mocha, you can draw like an upside down kind of crescent shape. This shape can represent a lip. And then similar to that, uh, you can draw in a shape like this, which will represent an eye. You can even throw in an eyebrow there. Okay, and just like that, wow, look at that, you have a face. You can even do this, and look at that, now you have the nose. Always be thinking in terms of simplicity while you're drawing these. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm considering my light source. It's like, where is the actual light source coming from? Is it, uh, in this case, I think it might be from right here. So let's go ahead and begin building off of a light source that's coming from the top left. Okay, and we can do things like, well, I want to try to stick to three colors for right now. So let's go ahead and continue with that. I'm going to draw in this ear and draw this in here. And this is really cool. I'm really digging this plate design. Uh, I always imagine Mocha wearing some sort of either she's got the maid uniform or she has the armor set. And in this case, I really want to draw her with an armor set on. So let's go ahead and use these shapes that we've created here to create an armor set. So these shapes here, I'm seeing almost like a almost like a necklace or like part of her part of her neck brace or neck armor, whatever you would call that. <laughs> I think it's called a gorget. Gorget. Have you pronounced that? The neck armor. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this now. So what I'm looking at here is actually I'm seeing her arm kind of go down like this. And then this open piece right here. I see some plates kind of going up like this, going into the chest piece. I'm going to add a brighter color here. And a lot of this, I will say that at this point, if you feel that you're trying to get in there and do too much detail, I would recommend against that. You want to still be thinking in terms of light and shadow. So still always be trying to simplify, uh, simplify your shapes, but at the same time, uh, keep them to these three colors, these three colors for now. Something that I find that's really handy uh, is say you have this large shape, which is almost representing, if I were to draw this in a little with a little more detail, you can see this is our shoulder piece right here, right? And then a really cool way to add additional detail onto this is just add some additional lines at the bottom. This represents, or this can represent, the layered plating that goes down the arm. Okay. Cool, not bad, right? Not bad. Now we're getting somewhere. Cool. Cool, I can even draw this in here. There we go. 
And look at how crazy this is. Like as I kind of like draw in this face, I'm playing around with these three colors. Oh yeah, by the way, the way that I'm choosing my colors is I'm just hitting Alt, Malt clicking to grab the color. And then I'm just beginning to kind of fill that in. Like I can even do that. See how I can begin sculpting the face with just these three planes. Really, really awesome. I'm actually gonna leave that eye that color. I think that looks quite nice. I'm gonna drop this down. I'm trying to stay away from the almond eyes that I always do. I always have eyes that go up like this, which does look nice, but I want Mocha's eyes to be more like round. It's round on the top and then it comes down to a, a large eyelash on the bottom. That looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That looks quite nice. Okay. Cool. Now, uh, there is something back here. I wonder if I want this to be like maybe a piece of a helmet. I'm also doing the easy thing where I'm covering up half of the character's face. And I don't want to rely too much on that. So let's go ahead and continue with this armor piece here. Let's continue with these armor pieces. So I'm really liking what's going on over here with this large kind of pauldron sticking off. And I imagine because this one is sticking out a little bit more, I'm thinking how would that, you wanna think about why that would be there in the first place because it looks way offset. So in this case, I might wanna fill in that space with let's say that her arm, here's just what I'm thinking on the underside here. So I'm thinking about the anatomy, right? So her, her body's going like this. Right, we've got the neck that's coming down, we've got this, and then we've got this arm that comes down like that. Right, and then this other arm, I would imagine that goes out like that, and then it's gonna come back in like this. Sometimes even drawing on top of your, your values like this can help you figure out anatomy. Not super important in this stage, but just in case you were wondering, that's what I'm thinking. So let's go ahead and continue with that. So if that's the case, then we definitely want to show a little bit of a gauntlet right here. Some gauntlet right there. Cool. Cool. And then in that case, the this pauldron would probably end right there and would come down like that. I'm using the background color, right, to kind of cut away. To kind of cut away. And I like these things that are sticking out. I don't know what this would be yet but those shapes feel nice to be there. So let's go ahead and leave them there. Okay, ear. Let's put that ear in. And then I'm thinking about what I want this shape to be here. This could even be, um, this could even be the shadow that's being cast by the helmet. In fact, this large piece that's kind of coming up like this, I want this to be a part of the helmet. So let's go ahead and sketch in a general kind of medieval looking helmet. What do those look like? Well, it's easy. They just kind of have this round kind of dome shape. They have this round kind of dome shape going on and then they kind of stick out the back. I guess this will cover the ear in this case. There we go, something like that. And then what this can be uh, this shape that's sticking up, this could even be like the plume. This could be the plume that's sticking out like that. Kind of exaggerated and kind of sticking out this way. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So you can see our character is starting to come to life right before our very eyes. There's something in there. There's some good stuff in there. Um, so I want to continue with this. I want to continue with really starting to bring the body out. Now you'll notice I flipped the canvas. That's just so that way I can get a better feel of looking at it with fresh eyes. Oftentimes when you flip the canvas, it allows you to see for just a split second what your piece looks like to someone who may be looking at it for the first time. And that is very, very valuable. Very, very valuable information. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw these plates in. I want some plates there. That plate.
plate there. There we go, cool. And you can use this mid-tone in here to kind of like begin playing around with like some ideas. Ideas of like, oh, maybe there's like this etching or like a kind of embossment or like little details that would go on in the side of this armor. So you can start playing around with that. And because it's low contrast, I find that it's much more forgiving. I think that that's the word I was looking for this entire time, is that when you work low contrast, it's so much more forgiving when you wanna just kind of go crazy with your details or with like small areas of detail. See how I just kind of like scratch in some things there and it automatically looks like an embossment or it looks like a cool kind of detailing on the edge of the helmet, but I didn't really have to design anything. You just say, I want an area of design or an area of high detail to be here, right? And you can add in like little things here and see how automatically that starts becoming a more interesting looking, more interesting looking pauldron. And it's a great way to design. I highly recommend it to anybody that wants to design armor or design characters, any of that stuff. It's always helped me out. Oftentimes I found whenever I get stuck concepting, it's because I'm trying to complicate things too much. I'm trying way too hard to complicate things. As soon as you get in there and you start breaking things down into smaller bits, uh, it ends up making everything a lot easier. Okay, so let's say, okay, I want a piece of detail there. Piece of detail there. There we go. See, look, it's just that easy. Just that easy. And when in doubt, always be thinking geometric. I always try to think in terms of like really being deliberate with my with my cuts and my shapes in this stage. Try to be as deliberate as possible. Like instead of just kind of like doing this and like that and that, actually I guess that kind of works. But try to like turn it into a literal shape. Like try to try a trapezoid. Try a square. Try a diamond. Always be designing with those things in mind. Uh, or they can be round shapes, like, but then make it like a tear shape. Um, doing these types of things or having something in mind uh, as a shape language that you want to incorporate to the entire piece or the entire picture, I found really helps to draw it together. And in this case, and in this case, we have a lot of sharp designs. We have a lot of blades and these kind of like pointy looking things that are sticking off. So I'm going to stick to, uh, like see this shape right here? Just for the heck of it, I'm going to clean it up and I'm gonna sharpen it. See this kind of round edge here? I'm gonna sharpen that up too. And what that will do is it will continue giving your piece uh, some semblance of uh, deliberateness. Once it's deliberate, it feels a lot better, okay? Cool, so that actually looks quite nice. I actually really like that. Uh, I would highly recommend that you don't worry too much about the face. In fact, the face, I would argue, needs to stay simple in this phase because it's really hard. It's really hard to design faces in this, in this fashion because you have a lot of stuff going against you. Like you're so used to drawing your faces with lines. You're used to kind of carving things out and moving things around with your lasso tool. Don't worry about that in this phase. I just drew the face on there. That way it would look a little nicer for you guys. But it might be a little bit of a double-edged sword because I don't actually expect you to do that. But who knows? You might actually happen upon a face or it might have uh, the, the expression that you're looking for. It might have like some semblance of a character that you're looking to achieve. So I wouldn't discount it entirely. But just know that I, I'm doing it more just for fun. So cool, digging that. Let's go ahead and add in some additional details in these areas here. And right before your very eyes, you can see our character coming together. Let's see, I imagine her, let's see, let's have her hair off to the side here. And then let's have the other side of the face down like this. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. 
There we go. That's a much more friendly face. That's what I imagine Mocha looking like. So see how that totally changed the mood by changing those eyes? Love stuff like that. So you can even play around with, and this is what I'm getting at guys, is that this technique works for building backgrounds. It works for building characters. It works for building faces. It's just another avenue for you to begin concepting and getting your mind going, getting your mind going. And the best thing that I found, whether it's this technique or it's just the sketching technique or you take a picture of the grain on the wall or try to find a character in the wood, the wood of your grandma's house on the walls. Where do I go? I don't know why I just assumed that everybody's grandma's house has wood in there, but I don't know. My, my grandma's house had a lot of like wood embellishments on the walls. But regardless, this is all stuff for you to uh, get ideas from. This is all stuff for you to get ideas from. And you might be surprised by how much easier it is to let your imagination flow when the pressure is off, right? And I found that working in this way, working with these three values, or I say three, because it's something that you want to aim for, but see how I've actually started to introduce another one? Is this another value? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. I introduced another super low contrast value in here just by accident. I don't even know how I got to it. But see how now I'm like adding that in as well adding that in to kind of like soften a few areas, seeing how it affects the different areas of my character. Um, and I want you all to be doing this as well. Because as you, as you relieve the stress of trying to come up with something new, uh, oftentimes your best work can come out of it. Oftentimes your best work can come out of it. And this is the way that I have been, oh, and my personal favorite thing, more important than all that emotional crap, is that you get your work done quicker. <laughs> you get your work done a lot quicker. And that, my friends, is invaluable. It is truly invaluable. Okay, so let's go ahead and just continue with this. I'm going to I'm going to kind of plug away at this for just a moment. I want to get this looking good for the thumbnail. And in the meantime, I'll tell you guys what I've been up to the last few weeks. Uh, things have been going good with work. I appreciate as always everyone's patience. Uh, things with icons have been going splendidly. But I have been, because of that, I have been doing a lot more work. I have been having to work a lot more. Uh, one thing I'm going to do here is now you can see that we're getting a little bit closer with our details. I'm going to start adding in things like, oh, well, if this is going to be metal, I imagine that a lot of this value would be dark. And a lot of this value would be darker. And what I can start to do is sort of like, I can begin, I can begin, what's the word I'm looking for? Adding detail by almost simplifying. So I can say, oh, well, I want this to appear metal. So let's kind of close in, let's close in this shape here. This highlight that goes through this metal plate right here. Let's go ahead and close that in. However, we are losing just a tad bit of this additional detail that was in this area. So let's go ahead and add that back in. And I want some additional details in here. I imagine there would be some sort of belt or something in this area. So let's go ahead and add in some shapes to give us something pleasing to look at. Uh, but yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, things with icons are going splendidly, but needing to spend a lot more time on the game. Uh, so yeah, as always, I appreciate your love and support as well as your patience while I continue making these shows for you guys. And, and yeah, I can tell that I'm slightly out of practice each time I get here. It's because I'm not doing these every week like I used to. But I don't really care. I don't really care because I'm just happy to be doing this. I'm just happy to be doing this and whether it takes me 15 minutes to say it or a half an hour to say it, I know that there's some good value here for you guys. And I appreciate all the kind comments. And most of all, I love seeing all of your new work, like your latest work on the lovely lane, on the Instagram, that comprises of something that you may have learned in this. Like when I see that you're putting the lessons to use in your own work, 
and even more so it's like sometimes i look at someone's work and i'm like oh crap like that's that's really good like and then they have like pictures of themselves on their instagram too because i'll like look at their profile i'm like oh man they're like super young like this person's like 18 years old i was like and they're doing stuff that looks like what i was doing when i was working at riot like they're like on the cusp already when, where i was when i was like 21 so it's like sometimes i i get kind of leery about it i'm like man maybe, maybe i shouldn't be teaching these tricks like these people are gonna get so much better than me <laughs> when they like if they're learning this stuff now they're gonna get so much better than me but you know what i think i like that i think i like that because the way that i look at it is that i can't be doing this stuff forever and someone eventually needs to take my place. Someone eventually needs to take on the legacy, continue the legacy of the Kane Kale. And uh, yeah, they need to work for me. So uh, we could really use you on our project. So get good, join our company, come have some fun. And yeah, we'll have ourselves a grand old time. Yeah, wow, that looks really fun. That looks really, really fun. So I'm pretty happy with that. I can definitely tell that there's some issues with um, there's some issues with like the underlying anatomy a tiny bit. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want to go into a part two and like continue this. Yeah, screw it. Let's do a part two. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, we're doing a part two. Let's jump into it, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll be back in just a moment. Uh, my spidey sense is tingling for about the the half hour or 45 minute mark where we'd usually stop this. But I really want to go into a part two and I want to refine this because I want to show you how I would take something like this. I want to show you how I would take something like this and go into the next phase. And that is like refinement and uh, actually like putting maybe a little bit of line work on top of it. Uh, so that's what we're going to get into in part two. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. Until then, you stay right in that seat, and I'll see you soon.